Hello, Scott here. I've been shooting a few videos over the last couple of weeks and I'm still learning how to do this and I'm in the house learning how to edit them. I've been watching them and I've kind of realized that I talk about in some of the videos different, different aspects to my hive and I, I thought maybe I should do a video explaining the two differences and why I came up with these differences. Um, I was thinking, you know, for a, a new beekeeper, maybe it's quite confusing. For somebody with a little bit of experience, they should be able to figure it out. It's, it's not that much different. It's only slightly different. Um, now, one thing I want to say is I certainly know how the negative comments in the YouTube world work, especially by those who are anonymous. Uh, I want a full disclosure here. I am not saying my setup is better than anybody else's. I'm not saying that you should switch to this because blah, blah, blah. This is just how I do it. So you take from it what you wish and just leave the rest behind. So with that said, um, this is what I believe is a standard setup. This is what I, this is what I started with. Um, we've got a telescopic cover. Um, you've got an inner cover. Now, oops, this inner cover has been modified. Uh, this was an evolution. I didn't just switch from this to this. I've been kind of watching other people and taking a little piece of what I like from one and a little piece from another and, and I've slowly, and I'm probably not done. I, I have a couple issues with the back that I'm still trying to figure out a better way. So yeah, it's been an evolution, but this was the closest to one of the originals that I could find. Then you just simply have two deep boxes. Now again, some people use mediums, whatever, but th this is the way I was doing it. I had two deep boxes for brood boxes and honey supers go on top of here. Then I just had a standard, a standard plywood bottom. All right, so problems that I had with this. Um, my first year, I had one strong colony and one weak colony, and I had lots of trouble with robbing, so I ended up with an uh, entrance reducer. That gave me some ventilation problems, so I wanted to solve that. Another problem I had was I had lots of trouble with mice my first couple of years, three years even, and uh, I slowly transitioned to that, and, and that solved my mice problems and whatnot. So, you know, yeah, okay, so you can put a mouse guard on, and you can put an entrance reducer on. Um, and I have, I have lots of those kicking around here, but I built something that I didn't have to do that with. Another problem I had was I'd be at my hive, working my hive, and you know, you crack open your frames, of course you should start with this one, but you're reaching here, and the bees were coming in from this angle and this angle, well, I mean, some of them will come from the back, of course, but they're coming around and they're wanting to come in, and they're maybe they're trying to come around this way, and I, again, if you have a colony that the bees are just a little bit not pleasant, shall we say, um, I didn't like standing there. So I found myself, and I never even really did it without thinking about it too much. I found myself working from the back of the colony. Now I'm working like this, trying to lift the frames out. And if they're stuck down and heavy and whatnot, that was no fun. So I, I wanted to fix that. And I'll show you that in a second. Another issue I had, and this was probably one of my bigger issues, was the inner cover. I see all the pictures in the books, and I, I still have friends who run equipment like this. Now this one has three holes because I was trying to increase the ventilation, but the ones, the initial ones that I bought, and I think I've burned them, <laughs> um, it had one entrance, or one hole in the center. Uh, I think it was for a bee escape and possibly a feeder jar. But the way that the, I see mo uh, I see a lot of guys doing this, and the, the bees come up through this hole and they run across and they go out through the top entrance here. That's fine. It causes some problems if you want to put a feeder jar on. Um, I've watched again, one of my friends would put a couple pencils here and set a feeder jar on so the bees can still come and go. Okay, so that, that's so oh, fine and dandy, but now in the fall, if the bees are grumpy and you're coming out here, you've got to put your suit on. With, with the setup I have, I don't have to. I can change those feeder jars. Um, again, we'll talk about that in a second, without, without too much trouble. Um, next problem was ventilation. I wanted more ventilation. I, I felt pretty strongly. And again, I know a lot of people don't think ventilation is important. And to those people, I always say, get two or three hundred of your best friends over for a house party and keep all the windows and doors closed. And I'll come check on you in six months. <laughs> we'll talk about ventilation then. I think it's important. Um, anyway, let, let's not argue about that. <laughs> I think it's important. So, I, 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 another fellow beekeeper was kind of thinking along the same lines and they had added three holes and I went over and looked at their, their setup they had three holes and they still took their telescopic roof and put it on and I tried to explain to them that they didn't get any ventilation because if I turn the you know this plywood comes down and contacts with this all the way around and I'll just put it upside down so you see that's all the ventilation you're going to get no matter how many holes you put in here so that evolution came and I picked this idea up from a Oh, a gentleman in Aurelia, uh, Dave Erie, 
I actually had some videos from him, and uh, quite a clever man. He had made these ventilation boxes, and this, now, oh, okay, so this had to evolve. The problem there is then the bees come up and build comb in there. So the next step was to take the inner cover and simply turn it over and put the entrance hole in the bottom, and then take some number eight hardware cloth and cover these holes and staple them down so the bees can't get up here. Then it, this is basically just a honey super, and it has holes that are about an inch and a quarter, and they're in the bottom third, roughly, and they're drilled in an upward angle. So when the rain hits here, it runs down. If it gets in that hole, it tends to shed away. It doesn't go in. And they have screens. They have number eight hardware cloth on the inside. Keeps the wasps and bugs and whatnot out of here. So then that would go on, and then you put your telescopic roof on. Now you've got all kinds of ventilation. Now I had to modify that as well because I'll show you that in a second too. But this I very quickly transitioned to, but like I say, I wanted to modify that bottom. So that's how I came up with this. Let's just go, go from it. Okay, so the, the telescopic roof is very similar except I made it deeper and I'll explain why in a second. The ventilation box is exactly the same. The inner cover is almost the same, except instead of having the entrance on the end, I moved the entrance to the side. And why did I move it to the side? Well, that's because I took the, the boxes and I gave them a quarter turn. So now when I come to my hive, I'm working from the back of the colony, and I can simply lift these out. I'm not twisting my body. I'm not interfering with the bees. Some people say the bees don't like it. I, I haven't had any tell me that they don't like it. They seem to like it just fine. So I have two brood two brood boxes. Summertime, some of my colonies lately, I've been running three. I'm going to do some more experiment with that next year. The floor is a little bit more complicated. It does take a bit more to build. I, uh, I wanted a better landing board. My hives sit on plywood or on a pallet, usually a piece of plywood. And if I need to shake any bees off, I can shake them in the front of the hive and they can just march up that. They don't tend to go underneath as they do sometimes. Although you could make something there, I'm sure. Uh, and the entrance reducer is part of the floor. I have a 3 8 by 4 inch entrance. I have never had any huge issues. Sometimes on a real hot, busy day, you might see a few bees clustering up here or at the upper entrance, but only for a few minutes. But since I've done that, I've never had another mouse get into my colony. I don't believe, I've, I've never seen robbing since I've done this. Um, for ventilation, the back is open. Now this is something I'm still working on. I'm not 100% happy with this. Um, I've played around with a couple of different door ideas, but I haven't found anything I like yet. I'm still working on that. Um, I can put the sticky board in the bottom for monitoring mites, although I don't follow that. I, I do a shaker jar. I, I keep an eye on the floor and monitor the mites, but when I really want to know what my mite count is, I use a shaker jar, and I'll, I'll do some videos on that as well later, making shaker jars. But the biggest thing about this is ventilation. I get tons of air coming up through here. The mice can't get in, wasps can't get in. Um, you know, it's a number eight hardware cloth. Nothing's getting in there. So I have that. Then I just used, oh, my, my deeps are a little wee bit different. I don't have the machine. Well, I guess I could do it with the table saw, but making that little cutout is uh, little, maybe a little tricky, and I hate them anyway. When these boxes are full, you're lifting that whole bloody box on your fingertails, fingernails. Uh, this has got a handle. It, I just like that. It, it, maybe when it comes to wrapping in the fall, although I'm going to wrap two different ways this year, um, it's a bit of a nuisance there. And I, and I suppose, too, for the migratory guys where they're trying to get so many hives on a transport, they probably don't want that. But for a backyard beekeeper, a real handle is real nice. So I run two deeps. Now in the, in the summertime, actually a lot of the last couple of years I've been going to three deeps and then my honey supers. Um, and I don't run a queen excluder. I, I, they have some really, really good uses, but uh, I tend not to use them as most people do. Um, I just have problems with that. I, I think you restrict the queen, you're setting up for swarm. Not that I've prevented swarms, they still occur, but uh, I'm just not crazy about queen excluders. Um, that, so then, yeah, then uh, the inner cover would go on. Now, another nice thing about the screens, like I say, and I've seen my friends put pencils there, and then they would set the jar on top of the pencils, and the bees can get in and out and whatnot. When the weather's cold and, and crappy, you go out and try and change that jar. You have to put your suit on. If your feeder jar, I use the small ones in the springtime for just one-to-one -one stimulant feeding, and I use these gallon jugs in the fall if I'm trying to put two-to-one and try and get lots on there. If the lid is flat, 
you drill 1 16th holes and the wire mesh has to be on the top side of the plywood, not the bottom side of the plywood. You can set the feeder jar on there and the girls can get their tongue up through the wire and into that jar and it's amazing how fast they'll empty that. Uh, the gallon jugs I can actually put two on or just one. Um, these you could put three, but again, in the springtime, I'm only ever doing one. Uh, if I need to put more than that on in the fall, well, then I, I, I've got a video I've, I've shot already of that, where I take the inner cover off and I put wooden slats on top of the frame and then the jugs. That's a whole other video. So that goes there. <coughs> then in the summertime, my ventilation box would be this way and then the roof is on. And, and if I had honey supers on, this would all be on top of the honey supers. Now, in the fall, what I do, um, actually, I was doing it today, actually. I've made these insulated inner covers with only one vent hole. It still has the wire. The wire is on the, not this side, the wire is on the other side. So the wire is, is on top of the plywood, but underneath the styrofoam. Um, and I still have my upper entrance. I would put this on. And then in the cold part of the winter, I, I cover that hole a little wee bit further. Um, in the springtime, I can still get my stimulant jar on there. Yeah, I'm losing ventilation, but that's only for a very short period of time. Then in the summertime, the vent box is this way, but in the wintertime, I put the vent box this way. Okay, so now you're saying, oh yeah, but now the rain's gonna get in there. Well, no, I made my telescopic roof with a deeper side, so that when I put it on, it reduces the ventilation, covers those holes. Now I can't quite get my fingers in. I think I got, I probably got about a quarter inch gap all the way around this. So the heat can still get out in the wintertime. You don't get that condensation and heat building up. Um, but yet you don't get the wind blowing through there. I think, <laughs> I'm sure I've forgotten something because uh, I have been shooting several videos and I, I plan to shoot a few more. I, I've, I've, I've done one video of actually making these winter inner covers and I'm going to do a few more things in the wood shop this winter and I'll show you. Um, so I, I'm sure I've forgotten some things, but it is what it is and uh, I will try to explain things that I'm doing as we go along. Like I've said at the beginning, I'm not saying it's the best way, I'm not saying it's the only way, I'm not saying it's the way you should be doing it. It's just how I do it. Uh, it's working pretty well. Um, my bees are happy. Uh, most of the time I can work my bees in the summertime, no suit and gloves and, and uh, no real issues. This time of year, suit and gloves are on. But yeah, it, uh, good fun. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I think that's all I want to say. So you be good to your bees, and I'm sure they'll be good to you. Till next time, see ya.